live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering theCUBE, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in New York City for two days of live coverage of CUBE NYC. This is our event. It's our ninth year covering the big data ecosystem going back nine years, but Hadoop evolved very rapidly in the past couple years into all things data, you know, from data science, practitioners, all the way to hardcore IT developers and DevOps and cloud. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Josh Istok, who's the head of data at Pivotal. Uh, certainly Pivotal known in the cloud world with Cloud Foundry and a variety of work that they're doing with cloud native microservices, a variety of DevOps. Um, however, big data practice over there for you guys, a great large organization. Welcome back, good, good to see you. Likewise, thanks for having me. So you guys um, have been doing extremely well. Give us the update of what's going on with Pivotal and data because you know, at VMworld um, recently, just you know, last week or week, two weeks ago, we saw PKS, sure. uh, Pivotal Kubernetes, uh, really a center part of VMware strategy. But that's not just VMware, it's cross multi-cloud. So when you start talking about multi-cloud, you can't ignore the adoption of cloud and, and the role of data in those clouds. So whether it's on-premises enterprises leveraging data, there's a cloud dynamic, but also data is fundamental. How are you guys handling the data? What's the data strategy? What's the data posture? What's the data framework for you guys? Sure, so it's a great question. Um, you know, let me start with, I actually feel like the market has coalesced around the product that we uh, shepherd on analytics very nicely. Uh, we've seen huge adoption of our of the open source, huge adoption of our marketplace offerings, with specifically on the analytics side with Greenplum, uh, uh, we've we've really focused on a number of things the last couple of years. So one, you know, I think having been in this industry for the last ten years, um, we have uh, effectively seen a shift from the old uh, commercial, you know, uh, proprietary engines that used to do analytics onto open platforms. And, and as many folks uh, out there know, about two years ago, Pivotal um, actually announced open sourcing all of our, uh, all the software that we shepherd. So Greenplum being one of those. Uh, as, and part of that uh, transition was really to um, kind of uh, make use of this, this idea that uh, users are looking for an easier experience, an easier access to data in general. And when you look at what Greenplum had to offer, uh, effectively it was a SQL, an anti-SQL engine that was paralyzable. And, and you know, over the, the course of 10 years, we've built a, a huge amount of energy around analytics within that, that ecosystem. And I think both Hadoop and Greenplum you know, kind of tried to solve a, a similar problem, but from two different angles. So Hadoop took a, a, a very interesting way of taking your data and spreading it out across um, you know, commodity servers, but doing it in a very generic, non-structured way. And Greenplum effectively took Postgres and did the same thing, commodity servers, all nine yards, and spread it across many, many Postgreses. So a lot of, a lot of times we'll, um, we'll refer to our MPP platform as a massively parallel Postgres platform because that's kind of <laughs> what it is. Um, now, to, to bring it all back to reality, um, one of the things we've been focusing on is uh, up-leveling the version of Postgres that, we're, that we are based on. And I think all of the MPP players that have existed over the last 10 years uh, were forked off of Postgres at some point in time. Um, we forked at 8.2. Uh, we actually just began work um, in the open source community on 9.3, and obviously a lot of changes between 8.3, 9, 1, 9, 2, et cetera. But, but we feel really good about that trajectory, and that's actually able, enabling us to more easily democratize data to, to kind of anybody. So, so the other thing we've been focused on is really harnessing uh, interoperability and connectivity between the most popular open source scale out technologies. So think Spark, you know, think Kafka, think HDFS, Hive, you know, all of those things very easily and very seamlessly interact with the Greenplum platform so that Greenplum now becomes an enabler and, and a very compliant enabler in that. So on the ninth point, you just got my facts right. So you said you started work on that. Is it complete or so? so one, just get a timetable on that. So, so great question. So you know, in two thousand five, we forked from eight point two. Two years ago, we began the port from eight point two to eight point three. That took actually, honestly, it took almost two years. 
um, we learned a lot during that uh, particular effort. And so the port from 8.2 to 8.3 was literally like a third of the time, 8.3 to 8.4, even less. And so we just committed 9.2 uh, into the open source community. 9.3 just began. Our, our, you know, don't don't hold me to the to the dates and whatnot. But we're looking to for Greenplum six to be released early next year. Uh, that would be based off of Postgres 9.3. So kind of the work effort that's being started right now. So you did what the work on the front mean for customers. I mean, what do I get? So so, so great question. So uh, again, you know. Uh, I think we get ribbed a little bit on, on uh, certain social media on 8.2 was literally, you know, 15 year old technology, right? So, so, so totally get that. What, what I think what people oftentimes forget is that along the way, you know, we've um, added back features into that forked version in order to keep pace with some of the competitors. Uh, what this allows us to do is actually focus our efforts on AI, on machine learning, on analytics, and the database technology itself can be leveraged from the open source community. And there's literally decades of experience and, and ingenuity that's been put into the Postgres open source edition. So what do I get as a user? You know, as a, as a, when I look at the different users that we have, if you're a developer, and again, from a pivotal standpoint, we have a lot of DevOps uh, developers who are leveraging our platforms. This allows me to take the same amount of, of effort and energy and ingenuity that I have leveraging applications in Postgres and translate them to Greenform. So I can get the power of, of, of parallel Postgres without having to actually engineer it. It also means all of the Postgres compatible uh, utilities that are out there, anything from front ends to ETL engines to, to whatnot, all work out of the box with Greenform. Talk about the impact of cloud, because obviously it makes a lot of sense. You're leveling up at 9.3. By the way, it's pretty common to do the front end work, take a couple of years foundationally, and then accelerate back end releases, point releases. So you know, I don't think people are going to really hold you that. As long as you keep the release 9.3 on schedule, uh, yep. to some degree, with, you know, in that window you got. So, so that's key. Now cloud has been a big driver of analytics. So okay, database, I get that. Go yep. to open source, leverage the database, do what you got to do. But now pressure to use the data, the whole setup phase of data is over, you know, set up in clusters, we've seen evolve from data lakes, now we're seeing, okay, now I have data buses, data planes, there's different words for it, but ultimately, horizontally scalable data. Yep, totally, so. so this, is, this is what people want to know, what's <coughs> the usage, where's the beef, AI points to the demand side, sure. the user side. So, so, so again, I, I think that um, the clouds, you know, specifically like Amazon and Azure, have really given uh, users this ability to very easily spin up and try anything that they want. And that's been great for adoption of new technologies. It's also been um, interesting, the fragmentation of you know, the use of those technologies and where the data resides. One of the, one of the really big um, advantages of Greenplum is the fact that we can run on all the clouds. So we're in the marketplace and you get the same experience you know, on Amazon. Which marketplace, Amazon? Amazon, Azure, uh, and we've got um, the compatibility with Google as well. So, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's open source software, it can run anywhere. What we've got our engineers doing is making sure that it runs um, well uh, everywhere. And so, so for example, in Amazon, um, the same kind of experience you'd get uh, uh, basically instantiating their MPP platform you get the exact same experience, really basically the exact same cost, but you get a lot more, uh, lot more features. So for example, um, we have this ability to literally load terabytes and terabytes of data an hour in, inside of an Amazon platform. We also have the ability to snapshot that and back up and restore that literally in a matter of minutes while queries are running, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I think what, we, what the cloud has enabled us to do is uh, put some, some very innovative features onto a very easy to use platform while still maintaining that, that core feature that customers are, wa are wanting, which is I don't really want to have to know how to install it. I don't want to know how to run it. I just want to push a button, have it instantiated, and then I want to use it. And that's where, the, that's where we're focused on, is, is giving that usability experience and then the compatibility with all the other things I was talking about. So the, the MPP crowd created a better data warehouse for, certainly for many workloads that could take advantage of the architecture. And then Hadoop comes along, it's like, okay, it's a cheaper you know, data store. Sure. Right? And, and we now realize, okay, it's not an either or, it's sort of all of the above. AI now comes in as this, as this automation layer. So what do you see as sort of the next wave in 
data stores and value stores, if you will. Sure, sure. So another another great um, kind of question there. So um, one of the things that you know we've we've focused on again is kind of that integration. So we recently, in our last version of, of Greenplum, we introduced uh, Kafka streaming into Greenplum. So you literally take a topic inside of Kafka, you assign it to a table inside of Greenplum, and we just load it for you as as data rolls. That actually allows you to have this continuous stream of analytics that can happen through uh, uh, this MPP, this massively parallel Postgres system. Now. If you look at you know kind of the future, what we we see is more and more desire to push as much of those analytics out to what I call the edge as possible, and so the edge can be anything from an IoT device out there, or perhaps it's really just the cloud with on-prem being you know kind of the the base. So our Postgres compatibility and the fact that we're open source and the fact that you can run it anywhere allows us to basically have a core analytics engine as close to you as possible we have the ability to take those same analytics and run them in the cloud, any cloud, and then we have the ability to actually shrink those and run those same analytics on like a single you know, instance of, of say Postgres, again, kind of out on the edge. And so that gives you much faster uh, innovation time, much easier integration time, because you're talking about the same base platform you know, across all of that, that um, ecosystem. So talk about the marketplace sales. One of the things I, that's a proxy for us when we look at some of the signals in the marketplace, because you're right, users want to spin up basically analytics infrastructure. Yeah. And you know, cloud is infrastructure as a service. But you know, the software for analytics is a little bit different. <laughs> it's software, right? So okay, so I can see spinning up a cloud instance. Sure. Basically, multi-tenant, isolated infrastructure, no problem, check. Yep. Mm -hmm. Get workloads going, test and dev, or whatever you want to do with it, um, easily. So sales on marketplace should be an indicator of activity. Correct. Do you guys track that, and can you share any kind of anecdotal or data on you know, how marketplace sales are going on Amazon and Azure? So as a public company, we don't really share that level of detail. What I can tell you, though, is since we, we launched in our first cloud about a year and a half ago, which was Amazon, and then based on market demand, we've been launching in the other one, so Azure is, is, was kind of next. Uh, pretty much, with, with the exception of what I'm going to call um, uh, seasonal, uh, so like i.e. I you know, the holidays, uh, pretty much month over month, our usage has grown literally month over month in the last year and a half. And, and it's, it's interesting to me, um, you know, if you look at kind of our user base, we've, we've been around for 10 years. And so we've got a, a very core group of customers that have literally been with us for three, four, five, six years. They like our products, they continue to expand. As you know, the cloud is, is part of the architecture for every organization now. And our ability to take what they're doing now and roll it into the cloud exists. So we see that adop adoption. Um, on the flip side, what we see is a lot of very niche customers who actually make a business out of analyzing data, loving the cloud for what the cloud is, right? I don't have to have something running forever. I don't have to you know, install a bunch of hardware. I can literally instantiate it and go. And we've got some customers now that have, you know, in that uh, idea of I've got my core analytics and then I have the edge, we've got some customers that are actually spinning up Greenplum ephemeral clusters to, in order to service their specific needs as a, as a side analysis from their core product. So for example, if, if my uh, analysis engine is around healthcare analytics, you know, for a specific provider, I may want to provide them the capability to do further analysis. So the ability to spin up a Greenplum cluster and leverage that completely independent of your core engine exists today. Talk about the, um, the impact of use cases because, you know, okay, this low hanging fruit, that sometimes that can be a distraction or a missed data point. The real value we're seeing now is new opportunities. Okay, you mentioned these people doing you know, spot analytics, essentially, sure, you're yep. saying. Mm -hmm. But then you've got practices operationalizing analytics within an organization, a little bit more complex. You've got legacy. So what are some of those new opportunities? What's the low-hanging fruit? I can imagine the low-hanging fruit is just get data set up and then and do some analytics on some core systems. But what are the new opportunities that you guys are seeing at Pivotal that, that give us an indicator of where the market might be going? So, so one, on the low-hanging fruit, it's everything from you know, the traditional security analytics to, to even things like ERP consolidation. So, you know, you think about uh, large organizations that have had multiple ERPs for a variety of reasons. Yeah. One would be like, you know, acquisition, right? So, so being able to, to actually query and analyze that data is, is somewhat laborious. So being able to, you know, yeah. plug it into uh, a, an open source engine like, like Greenplum, very nice. 
uh, predictive maintenance. You know, we, we were actually just asked by a, a retailer, you know, we're shifting a lot of our legacy teradata over to the cloud. And they're looking at things like, you know, what Google has and what Amazon has. And they'd like to understand, you know, where does, where does Greenplum fit in all that? Because the experiments that they've run have shown them that while it's easy to get started in a lot of these niche products, it's actually really hard to take the, the traditional enterprise things that have been working for you know, 20, 30 years and move them over there. They don't support it all. And so, so our ability to do business intelligence, to actually be you know, a full rounded data warehouse plus a data platform that actually analyzes unstructured and structured data. You know, we, we, we actually toss around a what we deem um, what we call a magic query. And so, so the, the question really is, and, and it's a relatively um, simple question, uh, but, but if you were to ask of your data, you know, I'm looking for um, any transactions that um, either Pavan or Peter, uh, and their names sound like Pavan or Peter, have uh, where they've withdrawn an amount from an ATM of around $200 within a, uh, a radius of, let's say, four blocks of this particular data point. You know, like how would I answer that? And that, and that has everything from, you know, kind of advanced analytics to uh, uh, geospatial to even some um, uh, unstructured, you know, with the sound. Uh, and all of that can be answered literally in like eight lines of, of code within Greenplum. And by code, I mean um, SQL, you know, the same SQL that these folks have been running for 35 years. All of that can be answered leveraging our, our, our platform that is integrated solar, it's integrated, you know, Apache Madlib, it's integrated. Kafka, et cetera, et cetera. All of that can be answered through a, a very simple you know, thing. And then from there, you can actually push a query like that out and you, you can start to, you know, in your mind, think about like, oh, you know, if I'm at an ATM with a, a very limited amount of CPU and, and even network capabilities, what can I push down to that particular ATM to prevent you know, anything from fraud to you know, theft, yeah, et cetera. That's a huge use case. Well, Jacques, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. I know you guys have been very successful with this open concept. I know you guys have your own event, you're engaging a community, you guys are building community, Pivotal had a community, yep. but now with Cloud Foundry, you have cloud, you got DevOps, you got data. How, is, how are you guys bringing that together? Because, you know, talk about your event that you do, talk about how you guys sure. are building community and, and sustaining and growing that community. So, so uh, earlier this year, we actually teamed up with the Postgres comp folks and, and uh, alongside of that created Greenplum Summit. Uh, hugely successful. We had customers from around the globe come out over to uh, not near, uh, not far away from here. Uh, we're looking to do that event, you know, on a on a regular basis now. It helps foster the community, and and as we've said, I mean, these are the folks that are are actually solving hard problems. Uh, with regards to how we're bringing it all together, it, it's it's funny, but if you look at the three parts of Pivotal, one is you know Cloud Foundry for a platform for deploying applications. One is, you know, kind of our data products for a platform for deploying uh, specifically analytics on your data. And then one is is around, you know, agile development. We do, we leverage that agile development on both the data side and the the application side, such that um, customers see progress faster than they ever have before. What we see is some customers are ready to go on the application side, and we go lickety split on that. And when they turn around, they, they kind of think, okay, we've solved some of the low hanging fruit. Um, now, how do we make it smarter? And in comes the data side where we can plug in microservice you know, architecture such that they can very easily plug it into something they've already built. Other folks are actually coming to us and saying, hey, we've got analytical problems and, and they're too big for my existing system. You know, in the case of like is going away, you know, help me like, help me uh, make sure that the stuff I have right now continues to work, but also prepare for the future. And so we can help them immediately on this side. And by the way, you know, most of, the, of those organizations are actually looking to transform how they build software as well. There's a nice little tie in there. So, so I think the original premise of, of Pivotal, the three legs, you know, agile, you know, a cloud platform and a data platform continue to exist. It's up to the individual organization of where we plug in, but we've literally on any of those those three pillars, we plug in pretty nicely. And just for the just to get the last point in for the folks watching, where are you guys going to be in the next couple months for events if they want to hook up with you guys? So 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 um, probably the the biggest event again will be Greenplum Summit at PostgresConf uh, early next year. Uh, we're also uh, hosting uh, Spring One 
here in two weeks in DC, uh, where it will primarily be on our, our developer community in the, in the Cloud Foundry side, but uh, both Dell and uh, uh, the Greenplum folks will be there for the analytics side. Uh, we've got a bunch of, um, of events actually scheduled with Dell as well around uh, artificial intelligence uh, and some of our new hardware because believe it or not, people are still buying stuff to not be in the cloud. And, and we're there with a very nice solution. That kind of November time frame, right? November, announced yes. that there's an analyst meeting then and it's sort of a yearly thing now. Yeah. So, yes. And there's we know there's an AI theme, we don't know much about it beyond that, but the, there's chatter going on in the industry, we the found ecosystem, out last not surprising night. you guys are <laughs> Should we tell everyone night. we found out last night? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say AI, purpose-built hardware for AI, like you guys shown with Green Plum, I think is a no-brainer you can see. You know, you guys, NVIDIA, probably Dell EMC building, Ex AI exactly. specific chips to software. Correct, yeah. and then of course, right, since we're all on a journey to the cloud, your ability to take that and, and leverage it in both places exists. Yeah. On any yeah. cloud. I mean the cloud is just yes. cloud and on-premises are operating edges, if you will, how you want to look at it, they're operating environments. Consistency is critical. 100% agree. Jacques, thanks so much, Kwon, you appreciate it. Jacques, with, with, with Pivotal Data, head of data, at Pivotal, sharing his insights here. And we're bringing you all the data here in New York City for the next two days. We're in day one of Cube NYC. Stay with us for more coverage here in day one after this short break.